Hello and welcome back to the Mentored Engineer. In this video I want to talk about directional control valves. So directional control valves are a splendid thing. Uh, they allow us to control the direction of cylinders, of hydraulic motors, um, any number of things that we need to control how oil flows in and out of, especially things that have you know two ports. So valves are classified in the number of ways and positions they have. All right, most directional control valves are four-way, three-position. Now, what that means is there are four ports into the valve. All right, so ways equals ports. It's, I don't know why they say it, but it's, it, it's the way it is. All right, positions is the number of uh, different configurations you can put that spool into. Okay, so let's talk about uh, what activates these uh, directional control valves. A lot of them are manual. You got a lever, uh, you got a foot switch, uh, something of that nature that is activating it. Uh, you have solenoids that can activate it. And solenoids are, uh, I'll say, dumb technology. They're using uh, electrical, electric magnetic coils and they will uh, shift fully either one way or the other so that it's a very bang bang operation. There's no uh, feathering it of any kind. Uh, electroproportional is how you get a little more finesse in the system. Those usually have some sort of feedback. A lot of them are systems that use pilot pressure to shift the valve, uh, which rolls us into our next one, which is pilot operated. Uh, pilot operated is using uh, another fluid, either uh, lower pressure hydraulic pre uh, fluid or air pressure to shift the valve. Um, and then you can have uh, spring shifting. Most commonly, it's gonna be spring centering. All right, so let's look at what a valve looks like, okay? So I'm just talking about four position, three way. This is a typical direction of, of controlling a cylinder right here. I've got one, two, three, four ports into the system. I have pressure, my tank line, my A port, and my B port. And in this case, I have spring centering. So if I uh, if I don't do anything, it's just going to naturally fall into the center position right here, which I have left out of the schematic for right now. If I shift it this way, this part is now going to be in the middle, and that's the f you know first position, second position, third position. All right, that's three positions, four-way, three-position valve. All right, so my pressure can now flow from pressure to A, and my return flow can flow from B to tank. All right, so in this case, my cylinder would extend. If I relax this directional control valve, nothing's gonna happen. I'm gonna go back to this and whatever the center configuration does is what it's, it's just gonna stay there. All right, the other one is I can do reverse flow, which is now gonna send pressure to B and A to tank and that is just going to retract the cylinder. Okay, so let's talk about uh, symbols and how they are used uh, to, to shift this. So if I use a solenoid, um, uh, or electrical proportion, these are both the same symbol, uh, it's just a rectangle with a diagonal line drawn through. All right, that means if I energize this, it's going to shoot that way. If I, enter, if I put one over here, it's going to shoot the other way. All right, uh, pilot operated right here. It looks very similar, except it's a V, and usually one side is shaded in. And that's going to say, I have fluid over here, and that fluid is going to push the spool over, and that's just the way it's going to, uh, to go. It's always going to push uh, in. Same thing with springs. They're always going to push. They never pull. All right, uh, I can also have manual overrides, which um, usually look like a lever, I think something like this, um, that uh, shows, and this is the only one that they can go both ways, is I can pull, push or pull that, that lever. Uh, but it, I would only draw it on one side too, unless for some reason I have handles on both sides of my, um, my valve. Okay, so let's talk about the center position now. Now you see that magically there just appeared all this stuff on here. Um, and basically these are like the sixth most common uh, uh, 
ways to do a center. There are some other uh, customized ones, like you can get uh, uh, like pressure to A always and B to tank always. Um, any combination, there's, a, there's tons of different opportunities. But here are the most common. Uh, first one is tandem. So if I want to do some minor load holding in A and B, I close them off and I run pressure to tank. Now the important thing about this is I don't want to run a bunch of, uh, if I have an open center system, I don't want to put a bunch of tandem um, valves in a row. I want to do something else and we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, here I can do a float one. This is for a closed center system where my pressure port would be closed and then A and B go to tank. So as A and B are, you know, if this is a cylinder, um, if I was suspending a load on this, uh, or trying to compress it, that thing would just compress because uh, the A port is going to tank as well as the B port. And I can, uh, I can be pushing out A and pulling oil back into B and then whatever is left I can send to tank. I can also draw oil out of the tank uh, if there's high enough pressures. All right, so a regen circuit, uh, and these are very rarely used. This is the most uh, rare configuration where my my P, A, and B are um, tied together and my tank is blocked. So what that does is um, if I have this cylinder right here, if I pressurize both the A and the B ports, most people think that nothing happens. Uh, but what actually happens is the oil, uh, this side has bigger area than this side. Uh, so what will actually happen is the rod will extend very quickly because it only has to move the amount of oil that the rod takes up, which is very small. So you don't have much force, but it moves really fast. And the oil that, and it gets, it goes fast because the oil that's in the B side actually gets regenerated back to the A side. So I'm putting oil in here from the pump, plus I'm getting the oil that's coming out of the rod back into the pump. And that's what's going on there. Uh, there's a lot of other ways to do this, but a regen center is one of those ways to do it. It's great if you need um, something to uh, go out quickly. And then if you wanted, if you ran into um, pressure issues, you can go ahead and shift your spool so that um, your B is now going to tank rather than going to uh, the A port. Okay, so the next one is closed center where everything is closed and uh, there's no oil flowing anywhere. Uh, be very careful. Do not use this with uh, something that's moving very fast. If you have very high flow rates and you stop it, you're going to have a lot of uh, what's called a water hammer um, effect on this where your hoses will uh, jolt real quickly. Don't do that. Um, a better option is to use a motor spool in that case where you would uh, block off your pressure, but um, your A and B will bleed to tank. Um, the other option is to use a float one where um, it's basically just a, you get higher flow rates here than this one. Uh, motor spools are great uh, if you have a counterbalance valve in between your valve and your cylinder. cylinder. Uh, what it allows it to do is to uh, bleed off the, the pressure of the tank or the A and B ports, excuse me, and uh, just allows that pressure to go to nothing when you're not using that uh, that function. All right, so the last one, as I mentioned before, that with the tandem one, you don't want to stack a whole bunch of these together. Uh, what you want to do is get a whole bunch of ones that have a through section. And what it allows it to do is, um, I'll actually draw a little bit more of the schematic, is both of these would be tied to your pressure. All right, sometimes there's a check valve in there, um, very small one. And what happens is, is if everything is blocked off, uh, my pressure goes through and I can power another valve uh, downstream of it. If I, if I don't do this, or if I do this and have uh, multiple valves, uh, what, what happens is uh, if I don't have this one shifted, or if I do have this one shifted, and I'm returning oil through the tank line, then I have the tank line plumbed into the next valve. Um, I'm working with different pressures. I might have weird interactions because I'm using a tank line to 
power pressure line now. Uh, this one, this pressure here would always be the same. And then as I shift it, it would actually block uh, the flow through this uh, center port. All right, well, uh, we'll get into that a little bit more in our next video where we actually will lay out uh, our logs, logs uh, splitter schematic uh, as far as the directional control valves and analyze that as to why a tandem is a bad choice and a through valve is a much better choice. So thank you for watching and have a great day. Thanks, bye.